Welcome everyone to tonight's softball matchup between the West Washington Lady Senators and the Lanesville Lady Eagles. Never too early to, to look ahead a little bit. Um, this is a sectional matchup, probably the, the number one and number two uh, teams in the sectional. The Lady Senators uh, are coming out with their ace, Gracie Abels, pitching tonight, along with the Lady Eagles, who are going to pitch their ace, also Hannah Nunnemaker. It's, it's one of those that... Um, you know, you'd like to be able to not throw your ace tonight, but the Senators have some health issues, so their backup pitcher um, is not here tonight, and the, the Lady Eagles see this as a chance to, to show the Senators what they've got, so they're going to throw their ace too. Both teams come in with winning records here. You see the Senators out on the field ready uh, to uh, <clears throat> start the game here. They go with their uh, lineup that they've used most of the season so far. Um, one addition is A.J. Combs out in right field, so she's the, the addition out there. The rest of them have, are playing in their normal spots. Leading off, will be number seven. Leading off is number Cassavella. seven, Casavella. She steps in. Gracie Abel is the pitcher tonight. First pitch is going to be high for a ball. Gracie had an excellent outing at Clarksville where she struck out nine in her three innings of work. There's a... There's a strike. She did have 15 strikeouts against Madison, so racking up those strikes, strikeouts early here in the season. Tonight could be another one of those double-digit nights for her. Swings through that one. Going to bring the count to one ball, two strikes. Senators are coached by Mr. Chris Long. Swings through that one. That's going to be a strikeout number one for Gracie Abels tonight. Up next is Morgan Sonner, the first baseman. Sonner steps in, is in the front of the box. Not too many times you're going to see people in the front of the box against Gracie. Fouls that one straight back. Lexus Brown behind the plate here. Then around the infield, we've got Riley Hall, Alandra Johnson, Hayden Kress, and Lizzie Keltner. That one right back up the middle. Dies. Cress with the overthrow of first base. Wouldn't have got her anyway. So Lanesville gets their first base runner of the night. That is Morgan Sauner. Up next is Allie Schneider, the shortstop for the Lady Eagles. Yeah, that's give her a base hit on that one. She's the the play wouldn't have been in time anyway, so uh, the overthrow didn't hurt anything here. Lexus Brown has to be ready to to gun down some Lady Eagles on the base paths. They go to bunt, that one's down. Gracie Abels fields it, flips to Keltner at first. Makes the second out. So two outs, runner on second. Hannah, Hannah Nunnemaker, the pitcher for the Lanesville Lady Eagles up. She is a Lady Eagle with some power, so she does have one home run already on the year. She got that against Jeffersonville. That pitch is high for ball one. Around the outfield, we have Destiny Nephis, uh, Madison Brown in center, and A.J. Combs playing right tonight. That pitch is outside again. Ball two. Yeah, 
Abels goes to the wristband, looks at the pitch call. That one fouled straight back. These two uh, pitchers, both Abels and Nunnemaker, are very familiar with each other. They play travel ball with each other, so they, they know each other very well. Abels with the delivery. That one high. Going to be ball three for three and one count here. Two down. There is a spot to put Nunnemaker on first, so we don't have to go after her here. going to be ball four. Give Nunnemaker first base. So now two down, runner on first and second. Danny Hare, the catcher, comes up to bat. Two down here. Hair digs in, ready for the, the delivery. That one going to be high. Ball one. Delivery once again. That's a nice pitch by Abels. Brings the count even. One and one. Top of the first here. Senators looking to get the first home win of the season tonight. That one fouled up. Going to go back over us here in the press box. pitch outside. Evens the count two and two. Wind is blowing in tonight. You can see that flag out there in right field, right center field blowing, blowing in at us. So going to be hard to get one out here tonight. Going to swing at, through that one. So Lady Senators get out of the first inning. No run scored on one hit. We're going to step aside, have a commercial break. We'll be back in just a moment. In 2012, the Washington County Community Foundation began working on its next big initiative, Education Matters. The goal of Education Matters is to increase the educational attainment of adults residing in our county. The initial focus has centered on adults with some college and no degree. With the assistance of scholarships and a peer mentoring program, the foundation began helping adults return to college to complete their degree or obtain a certification in 2013. Realizing that strength lies in numbers, Washington County partnered with Clark, Floyd, Harrison, and Scott counties to create Education Matters Southern Indiana. This initiative continues to build. Bishop Seed is more than just seed sales. They're a multifaceted business. Owner Brady Bishop is a channel seedsman who knows your fields and can recommend an elite product designed to perform in your area and maximize the profitability of every acre on your farm. Bishop Seeds also offers chemical sales for the ever-expanding chemical industry and a variety of cover crops to help keep erosion down and yield up. They also offer climate field view so you can make a data-driven decision to maximize the return on every acre. Reach out and give Brady a call at 812-620-4624.
In 2012, the Washington County Community Foundation Back to live action here at the West Washington Softball Complex where there have been some renovations. They uh, put in a brand new six foot fence out there in the outfield. So that uh, was done over spring break and last week. So there were um, a couple of games that were supposed to be home games that ended up getting flipped and doing them on the road. So the first one against Floyd Central was supposed to be a home game for the Lady Senators. They didn't get to have that one at home. So they went to Floyd and uh, were unable to come out of there with a win. Um, just a, a real powerhouse team down there with Floyd. And then they went um, to Clarksville um, where they were the dominant team there. So both of those were supposed to be home games, and then uh, they played in a tournament this past weekend. So the Lady Senators have quite a few games under their belts. Um, so this is kind of becoming a, a, a quick learned routine for them. In steps Destiny Nephis, the senior left fielder, fouls that one off. Nunnemaker offers that first pitch strike. Destiny Nephis definitely behind that one, so there's one to short. Rolls able to turn that one and get the out. So going to be the first out. Is number two, Riley Hall. Up comes number two, uh, the freshman Riley Hall, the third baseman. She gets to see uh, what Nunnamaker has to offer for her. Going to be a called strike on the outside corner. Those of you at home can hear the uh, Senator dugout. They got some cheers going on down there. That's going to be a, another strike on the outside part. be a ball there bring the count to one and two Riley set ready to hit before Nunmaker even gets the pitch call she's ready to go that one up Nunmaker makes the play there for out number two Senators putting the ball in play but it's it's finding the uh, Lady Eagles up comes senior pitcher Gracie Abels. Going to be a ball on the outside. Looks very similar to the one that was called earlier. Uh, so. <laughs> Gracie way out ahead of that change up. Gonna even the count one and one. That ball out and in the dirt gonna be ball number two. Abels does a nice job of laying off of that one. Those of you at home field in a great, uh, in great shape. So, uh, you know, you can you couldn't ask for a better night for some softball weather. Just perfect field in great shape. Two good teams. I mean, Chrissy going to move up just a little bit in the box. That one comes going to be a foul ball. Foul that one straight back. Gets that one, but behind it again, so it's going to be foul. Oh, 
Gets that one up. Going to be foul. Get out of play the other way. So Gracie goes foul ball to the right side of the field, foul ball to the right side of the field, and then gets a round on one, foul ball to the left side. So That one going to be a line drive to right field. Nice job by Gracie Abels. Drive that ball into right field for her first hit of the night. Up comes first baseman Lizzie Keltner. Going to go with a courtesy runner on first base. Uh, that is number four. Mackenzie Brown, I believe, comes in. She comes in to run for Abels, who is the pitcher, so it's a courtesy runner there. First pitch strike, Nunnemaker doing a great job of getting out ahead of the Lady Senators here. So they're having a battle from behind. It's a ball on the inside part of the plate. Haven't seen Nunnemaker go inside very much. So that's, that's one of those pitches that Keltner was sitting not really looking for, looking for something outside, middle to outside of the plate. That one inside again, going to pound her in, not let her get those hands extended to drive a ball. Gracie Abel still over on first. Hare does a nice snap throw to first, but it bounces before it gets there, so Abel's able to get back. Going to be two balls, two strikes. Still just a tad late on that one, driven out foul on the right side of the field again. Swings through that one, going to be uh, the third and final out of the first inning. So we're going to step aside for a commercial break. We'll be back in just a moment. Lynx Clothing and Shoes carries a wide variety of items from name brand clothing and shoes to sports apparel and sporting goods. We offer custom screen printing and embroidery, free gift wrapping alternations and layaway. Our hours are Monday through Thursday, 9 to 5.30, Friday 9 to 6, and Saturday 9 to 5. We are conveniently located on the north side of the Salem Square and are a family-owned and operated business. Stop by and see us today, 812-883-4154. Back to live action here. As the Lady Senators go into the second inning, uh, tied 0-0 with the Lanesville Lady Eagles. Been the pitcher's duel so far. Gracie Abels with two strikeouts, where Hannah Nunnemaker has one for the Lady Eagles. Ava Kerr up here. Swings through that one. Abel's with a nice pitch there. That's something you're going to see 
Uh, if you watch mini games or come out to mini games, Abel's is going to throw strikes. She's going to going to be in the strike zone most of the night. Out early, 2-0 here. Good pitch to waste there by Abel's, able to throw that one outside where if Kerr does swing at it, it's going to be a strikeout. No way she can reach that one. See if they can get her to chase a little bit. Gets the strikeout there for number three on the night. Sam Lawyer, the second baseman, comes in. The uh, freshman here for Lanesville. That's Hannah Nunnemaker for Lanesville did a great job of getting out ahead of pit, uh, out ahead of the batters, and Gracie Abel's doing the same thing here for the Lady Senators. Bunt coming, that one going to be dropped foul. Going to be two strikes here on Lawyer. It's one thing about the way Gracie Abel's pitches. She doesn't waste much time out there. She's on top of the, the rubber ready to throw, so... Well, you thought about swinging at that one. Uh, wouldn't have been able to hit it if she would have swung. So good pitch there by Abels. So one ball, two strikes here. Top of the second. That was a, a heck of a pitch by Abels. Not able to get the call. Might have been a, just a touch high. Um, but didn't get the call there, so count now even two and two. <laughs> Throws that one by Lawyer for strikeout number four. Haley Goins comes up, the third baseman for the Lady Eagles. Nobody on, two outs here in the top of the second. Nice pitch on the inside part of the plate by Gracie Abels. This matchup tonight um, was one that usually happened at the regional level um, for the past few years. Uh, this upcoming year, the year that we're in um, with the realignment, this will be a sectional matchup. So two, two uh, really uh, prominent programs will be matched up in the, the sectional um, Kind of some realignment going some different ways. So West Washington came out of the sectional that they had hosted for the past couple of years and are will head to Lanesville. So Goins pops that one up. Lena Keltner under that one retires um, Goins for the out. So we're going to step aside, have a commercial break, and we'll be back in just a moment. In 2015, we launched the Dolly Parton Imagination Library. This is phase two of the Happily Ever After project. 
with the assistance of several local donors and sponsors along with five years of fundraising by the Washington County Youth Foundation, we finally had enough resources to launch the service. The Dolly Parton Imagination Library is a free service that mails age-appropriate books to all required Washington County children under the age of five. Although the faces of the leadership of the Washington County Community Foundation have changed over time, as is always the case with any healthy, thriving organization, the core values and mission remain the same. We continue to work diligently to assist our donors in creating a legacy that is meaningful to them. All of our success is directly related to the generosity of the sons and daughters of Washington County. We will continue to help our donors give back to our community through our foundation and improve the quality of life in our county. Back to live action here at the West Washington Softball Complex where the Lady Senators are tied and in going into the bottom of the second. Ainsley Nance, the designated player, steps in. That's a ball inside to Ainsley Nance. Ainsley's one of the girls on the team who may have enough power to actually drive one out of here with the wind blowing in. She, she can definitely hit some bombs. That's outside for ball two. And she's, Ainsley Nance is also one of the girls who really likes the pitchers who throw faster, so. Nunnemaker being very careful with her. Three balls, no strikes here. There's a called strike on the outside part of the plate. Drives that one foul past first base. Lander jumps out of the way. Lander Johnson in the on deck circle over there, just out of view for those of you at home, but she, she dove out of the way. Made sure that didn't hit her. Swings through that one for a strikeout. Batter's a shortstop. Nunnemaker's second strikeout of the night. Alander Johnson steps in, the freshman three sport athlete. Playing. Uh, shortstop here tonight. Fouls that one straight down into the catcher's shin guards. That pitch outside of Lander chased a little bit on that one. How's that straight back? So Nunnemaker still out ahead here. No balls, two strikes. Lander is still fighting here, fouling balls off left and right. Staying alive, doing a nice job of making sure that she gets the pitch that she wants, keeps fouling off until one of them comes. There's one right up the middle. Going to be caught by the shortstop, Schneider. Nice job by her to get that one. So two down. Hayden Kress comes up, the second baseman.
Swings through the first one, strike one. Gonna be a strike on the inside corner, so Chris swings through one and gets nibbled on the inside corner. Behind no balls, two strikes here. Crest looking to get on, then followed by Alexis Brown. Gonna foul that one down into the ground. Nice job of fighting off pitches. Hayden kind of struggled at the at the plate so far this year. Really needs to get a hold of one and, and get on base, get that confidence built back up for her. Another foul ball. There's a nice spot out there in right center field that's looking for a ball. Here's right at right at the scoreboard, the flagpole would be a great place to put one. But not on that pitch, so gonna be the third strikeout for Nunamaker. We're gonna step aside for a commercial break. We'll be back in just a moment. At the heart of the Channel brand are the relationships we build with farmers like you. We call it seedsmanship. With Channel, you'll experience our seedsmanship at work services on your farm through the year-round, hands-on, customized service of your Channel seedsman. Your local Channel seedsman, Brady Bishop, knows your fields and can recommend an elite seed product designed to perform in your area and maximize the profitability of every acre. Contact Brady, your local channel seedsman, at 812-620-4624. Back to live action here at the West Washington Softball Complex. We're going into the top of the third inning. Still tied 0-0. Only had... Um, Two base runners on the night. Gracie Abel's able to get a hit and get on, and one Lady Eagle has been able to get a hit and get on. Um, but other than that, it's been a, a pitcher's duel. Up comes number eight, Ellie Brooks. Fouls that one back. Abels gets the call from Coach Keith Abels. Those of you watching at home, call comes in from the coach, from the dugout. Abels goes to the wristband to look at what the pitch call is and then throws that pitch. So it's going to be a foul ball. Brooks able to get around on that one but fouls it down the third base line, out of play. That one hit hard, but Lizzie Keltner able to knock it down and then pick it up and step on first for the first out of the third inning. Back to the top of the lineup for the Lady Eagles is Lindsay Casabella. Nice pitch on the inside corner there by Gracie. Doesn't get the call. Gonna 
once again doesn't chase. Casabella watches that one goes by. Good pitch there by Abels. Going to be a foul ball. Nice bunt by Casabella. Tries to lay one down, but unable to keep it fair. So now we're going to be 2-2. Two -two. Lady Senators saw that bunt coming, so they brought the corners in and then charged as soon as she squared around. There's a foul ball straight back at you, those at home watching. Brings the count. 2-2. Two, two. That one going to be foul. Lizzie Keltner unable to get a glove on that one. Probably 10 to 12 feet foul, so coming from her first base position. I'm going to be hit at Riley Hall. Nice stop. Throws across the diamond. Unable to, unable to make the throw. So, going to be an error on Riley. The batter is the first baseman Morgan Sonner. On deck is the shortstop Ellie Schneider. Morgan Sonner comes up. Now we have a runner on first with Lindsey Casabella there the speedster, so Lexus Brown has to be ready to gun anybody down who's going to take off. She's square, she takes off, Brown makes the throw, unable to field it and make a tag is Alander Johnson. No harm, no foul, runner advances to second. It was, a, yeah, it was a strike there, so going to be a no ball, one strike count here for Gracie Abels. Yeah. Square to bunt, drops it down. Crest covers, so going to be out number two, but the runner does advance to third. So two, two down, runner on third. And Allie Schneider comes up, number 11. Senator's looking to get an out to get out of this inning. Abels goes back to the uh, pitch to get out ahead of the Lady Eagles. One ball, one strike here in the top of the third. Two down. Another nice inside pitch for strike two by Gracie Abels. Screwball on the inside. Schneider gave up on that one before it got there. Swings through that one for strike three. Going to be three outs. 
Lady Senator is going to come in and see if they can get something going on the batting side. We'll step aside. Be back in just a moment. Bishop Seed is more than just seed sales. They're a multifaceted business. Owner Brady Bishop is a channel seedsman who knows your fields and can recommend an elite product designed to perform in your area and maximize the profitability of every acre on your farm. Bishop Seeds also offers chemical sales for the ever-expanding chemical industry and a variety of cover crops to help keep erosion down and yield up. They also offer climate field view so you can make a data-driven decision to maximize the return on every acre. Reach out and give Brady a call at 812-620-4624. Back to live action here at the West Washington Softball Complex where the Lady Senators still battling here 0-0 uh, with the Lanesville Lady Eagles. Up to bat is number 21, the senior catcher Lexus Brown. There's a shot out to left field. Settles underneath it is Kerr, able to retire. Lexus Brown did square up on that one. Drove that pretty nice out there. Right fielder A.J. Combs comes up. That ball bounces before it even gets to home plate. So going to be the first ball there for Combs. Gets that one, hits it to Lawyer at second, where she's retired. Going to be out number two. Back to the top of the lineup for the Lady Senators. Batting lead number 13, the left fielder, Destiny Nafis. Two outs. Destiny Nafis steps up. Nunnemaker settles in. That one hit to the shortstop. Going to bobble it. No way you're going to throw Nafis out if you bobble it. Going to be just the second base runner for the Senators. Riley Hall steps in. I'm betting we're going to see Nafis take off here. The, the speedster that she is, she's... She's not hanging out on first base very long. That one going to be driven to the second baseman. Lawyer able to field that one. We're going to go to the uh, fourth inning. Tied 0-0 here. We're going to step aside for a commercial break. We'll be back in just a moment. Never miss a big game by downloading the IHSAA TV app for free on any device. For your iPhone or Apple TV, check the App Store. On your Android or Android TV device, load up the Google Play Store. Have a Roku or Amazon Fire Stick? We have the app for you. Check us out on Facebook Live, Twitter, or YouTube Live by searching for IHSAA TV. Or as always, click to IHSAATV.org for quick and easy access to your favorite IHSAA live and archived events. Back to live action here. The the Senators have made some contact on Nunnemaker. It just doesn't seem to be going anywhere quite yet. The only one really to get a hold of one so far is Lexus Brown, and she drove it to left field where it was then caught, and uh, she was retired. So not really a, a great offensive output for the Lady Senators yet, but same for the Lady Eagles. They've only had two base runners, and, and both of them are uh, their leadoff batter, Lindsey Casabella. She's made it to third base once but wasn't able to be driven in either so definitely a pitcher's duel between Gracie Abels and Hannah Nunnemaker and speak of the devil Nunnemaker is in to bat gonna be a ball Abels was very careful with Nunnemaker the first time Um, 
Going to be ball number two, I believe. Yes. Going to be 3 0 here. This is one of those players that uh, Tracy is very careful with. Doesn't want to give her anything to. To hit, so going to be ball four there. Going to put a put Hannah Nunnemaker on first base. That's her second walk of the night. Danny Hare, the batter, on deck is the Danny Hare, the catcher, comes up to bat. Going to bring in a courtesy runner for the pitcher. McKenna Magner comes in to Magner courtesy the run. The catcher Danny Hare steps up to to the plate. Lanesville uh, does tend to play the small ball, so Lady Senators need to be ready for a bunt here. That one driven, driven long way, but foul. Hits up against the nice new fence out there. It's the uh, first ding on the fence, I believe, in a game so far. So, Gonna even the count at one and one after that long foul ball. Hare was a strikeout vic victim the first time she came up. So she saw some pitches from, from Abel's and was able to turn on that first one that she threw. There's another ripped ball, but it's gonna be foul for strike two. One ball, two strikes. This is the, the time where Gracie Abels likes to throw that rise ball and, and get batters to chase. So Hare was a strikeout victim, like I said, the first time. So this could be a, another occurrence. That one outside. Nice snap throw to first. Lizzie Keltner able to stop it. Unable to get the out over there. So still nobody down. Full count here to Danny Hare. Going to be a strikeout. For Gracie, nice, nice way to battle there. Give her strikeout number six on the night. The Ava Kerr steps up, the left fielder who made the nice snag in the the uh, top half of the, or sorry, the bottom half of the third inning when Lexus Brown drove one out to her. Squares to bunt, takes that for a ball. Lizzie Keltner in the area. Really surprised she didn't lay out and snag that one. So, gonna even the count at one and one. 
you hear Coach Abel's down there saying, expect the bunt, expect the bunt, expect the bunt. So they're trying to advance this runner. They know this is going to be a low-scoring game. they got to get one across. So corner so the infielder playing way in. Swings through that one. Going to be strike two here. Kerr was a strikeout victim. Gets another strikeout. Sam Lawyer comes up the second baseman. She was a strikeout victim the last time she was up too. So Abels has been mowing them down with strikeouts. That one fouled straight back over Lexus Brown's head. Well, you're able to get out ahead of that one for a foul ball, which is just another strike. So no balls, two strikes, two outs here in the top of the fourth. Freshman looking to help her uh, senior pitcher, Hannah Nunley, or sorry, Hannah Nunnemaker, get some runs across here. Um, it is a courtesy runner out there on first for Nunnemaker. Lawyer, the freshman battling from behind here. There's one driven up. Senators making a run at it. Riley Hall in the area, able to get her glove on it, but unable to secure it. So going to come back and do it again. Ooh, lost that one. Going to advance the runner from first to second. Yeah, that's that's going to definitely be a wild pitch. Gracie held on to that changeup just a little bit too long. Bring the count to one ball, two strikes. Nobody hurt here. Gracie, Gracie just needs to go after Lawyer, the, the batter. Ball number two. Gets that one strikeout for the Lady Senators number eight for Gracie. We're going to step aside, have a commercial break. We'll be back in just a moment. You're good at keeping the car clean. We're good at your insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, online, over the phone, or in person, and stop knocking on wood. You're good at basement basketball. We're good at your insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, online, over the phone, or in person, and stop knocking on wood. 
back to live action here at West Washington where the Lady Senators are in a dogfight here, 0-0. Zero, zero. Gracie Abels, the pitcher, steps in here. She was able to get a hit, her first at bat. There's another one. And she tries to poke over first base, but going to be a strike. Drives that one straight back at Nunnemaker, who's going to retire Abels for the out. Lizzie Keltner steps in. She was a strikeout victim the first time she came up. Off of... Lawyer's glove, unable to catch that one. So that's that's uh, Claude saying he's scoring at a base hit. I would have definitely agree with him, Lawyer. Even if she would have been able to knock it down, it came off the top of her glove, so she was going to have to make a throw, which she wasn't going to be able to get there anyway. So Ainsley Nance in to bat. Going to be a strike on the outside part of the plate there. Ainsley Nance got out a way ahead the first time she was up. Three balls, no strikes, and then ended up being a strikeout victim, I believe. There's a ball off the end. Going to be trouble there on the base path, so we're going to end up with a double play as Lizzie Keltner goes halfway there on a ball to right field um, but probably shouldn't have really taken that many steps off the, the base there. So the, the Senators do get retired there uh, with uh, no one able to score. We're going to stick with you here through the warm-up. Some of you um, haven't seen the... Uh, Impressive short amount of time that it takes um, the Lady Senators to warm up. Gracie Abels usually throws one pitch. Lexus Brown throws that pitch down to second base, and they are ready to play. So it doesn't take doesn't take a whole lot of time for them to, to get going. Um, kind of a little bit of a disappointment there in the last um, half of an inning. Lizzie Keltner takes off from, from first base on a ball to short right field, hoping that it's not caught, gets halfway, and then turns and looks. It is caught, so she has to get back to first base, and it isn't able to get back in time. So uh, Lady Senators squander an op opportunity to score there. Up first for the Lady Eagles is Haley Goins. Ball driven to right field to A.J. Combs. Going to be foul ball. Just a long strike. <laughs> so A.J. does a nice job of trying to track that one down. Unable to get there in time before it goes foul. Swings through that one. Goins has kind of a little hitch in her swing when she swings it. It's a 
You see, she gets to the point where she needs to roll her wrists, and she finally does, but she holds onto it a little longer than. Fouls that one back. Way out ahead of that one, drives it straight down into the plate. Gracie Abel's had her fooled completely. Going's just lucky enough to get a, a piece of the bat on it and drive it straight down. That one's going to be flared out. Hayden Crest tries to get there. Nobody's there. It's fielded, thrown across the diamond, going to be kicked around. So she's going to end up with a double on that. Hayden Crest does a nice job of <clears throat> does a nice job of chasing that one down. Gets as far as she can, dives for it, and then it goes off of her glove. As she lays out for it, kicks even further foul, where then A.J. Combs picks it up and fires it to Alandra Johnson at second, unable to get Goins as she gets into second safely. That ball driven to Cress, who then bobbles that one. So going to be an air on Cress. Runners on the corners here. Lady Eagles threatening to score. Up comes Lindsey Casabella. Casabella has bunted in the past, so she squares, lays one down. So, fielder's choice, Gracie Abels fakes to first and then turns and fires to third, but unable to get anybody. So now we got bases loaded with nobody out. Morgan Sauner comes up. Coach Keith Abel's going to call time, come out, talk to his senior pitcher. Probably more of a talk to the rest of the infield. What are we doing here? Are we going to... We're going to play for an out at home. We're going to take an out. If they give it to us, where, where are we going with the ball? Which is... Um, you've got two, two freshmen playing on the left-hand side of the infield, Riley Hall and Alander Johnson, both, both freshmen. And then you've got Lizzie Keltner playing first. Um, who missed out on her freshman season of softball last year because of COVID. And then Hayden Kress is your only upperclassman out there playing second base. So come out, talk to the young infield, see where we're going with it, see what we're going to do. That one fired through the hole to A.J. Combs, who comes up firing to second. Going to advance, get two runs on the board. Runner going to advance from first to second on the throw. So up steps Allie Schneider with runners on second and third. Nobody down. Two runs here for the Lanesville Lady Eagles. <laughs> Lady Senators behind. Two nothing here. Chases that one high, so going to be strike two there. It's 
still got nobody down here. Coach for Lanesville calls time, wants to talk to his shortstop. Out across the way, it looks like the boys baseball team is trailing eight to nothing to Salem, I believe. Salem came off a big win last night, 17 to nothing in their home opener. That one up in the air going to be foul. Yeah, Allie Snyder up to bat here. That one fouled back over the top of the press box. Schneider staying alive here. That one flared towards Alandra. Alandra Johnson makes the catch. First out of the inning for the Lady Senators. Up comes Hannah Nunnemaker. Hannah Nunnemaker, the batter. One out. First base open, so Abels can pitch carefully to Nunnemaker still. Comes after her with the first pitch. That one off of Abel's leg. Going to score two more runs. Yep. Both runs score. So then we get a courtesy runner. 18 comes in to run. That one goes straight up. No go. Nobody going to be able to get that one. So going to be strike one. Last error, I believe I would give to Lizzie Keltner. The throw was there. Lizzie just didn't wasn't able to come up with it. That pitch outside. Snap throw back to Keltner. Going to be safe at first. Going to be 1-1 one, one count here on Danny Hare. Strike two on the inside. Settles in, pitches that one up in the air. Fouled out of play back over the top of the press box. Settle back in here. Lady Eagles already scored four in this inning, looking for more. That one hit to Johnson. Johnson fields it, throws across to Keltner. One out. You got to talk out there. That's out number two in the inning, but the runner advances to second. Sam Lawyer, the batter. Two out. Off. 
Number zero, Ava Kerr up to bat. It's going to be a ball inside. A little bit of miscommunication out there between the lady senators. Not sure how many outs there were, what was going on. <clears throat> Alander fires that one to first and gets the out, which is good. Getting an out is always good, but then the runner from first advances to second. So Evens the count, one and one. Lady Eagles have officially batted around. This is the ninth batter of the inning. Lady Senators looking to get an out and get out of this mess. Swings through that one, strike two. Swings through that one, gets the final out. Gives her nine strikeouts so far on the day. We're going to step aside for a commercial break. Be back in just a moment. Bishop Seed is more than just seed sales. They're a multifaceted business. Owner Brady Bishop is a channel seedsman who knows your fields and can recommend an elite product designed to perform in your area and maximize the profitability of every acre on your farm. Bishop Seeds also offers chemical sales for the ever-expanding chemical industry and a variety of cover crops to help keep erosion down and yield up. They also offer climate field view so you can make a data-driven decision to maximize the return on every acre. Reach out and give Brady a call at 812-620-4624. Back to live action here in the bottom of the fifth where the Lady Senators do trail four to nothing. Uh, Gracie Abel's has pitched a superb game so far. Uh, the, the defense behind her has let her down just a little bit with a couple of errors in that last uh, half inning and allowing four runs to score on only two hits. So Lander Johnson, the freshman, steps in here. Going to be outside for ball one. There's a, a strike. I think, I mean, to me, that one looked out further than the first one. <laughs> looked, looked, looked out further than the first one that was a ball, and then this one was a strike. So, squares the bunt, drops that one straight down. Nice run there. Unable to get to first base in time, so going to be an out, but nice job by Alander to lay that one down. She probably couldn't have rolled that one out there any better. Hayden Crest comes up. Batter of the second baseman, Hayden Crest, on deck is the catcher, Alexis Brown. One out. Very nice bunt there by Alandra. Hayden Crest steps in, fires that one right at first base, hits off of the first baseman, then a flip from uh, Lawyer to. Sauner at first to get the second out of the inning. The batter is the catcher, Alexis Brown. Alexis Brown steps up. She gave the last she gave the ball a ride. Her last at bat out to Kerr in left field. Only one to really get a solid hit on a ball so far. Start off with a strike.
That one outside for another ball. That one goes back, hits off of Nunnemaker's glove. <laughs> That's an interesting one. I, I think you give her the air on it. <clears throat> hard hit ball. Actually, I'd give I'd give Lexus a hit because that's a hard hit ball. Hits off the the outside of her glove before she gets to it. So let's give Lexus Brown a hit on that one so she gets first base there. A.J. Combs up to bat. Looks like number 18 going to come out and do some uh, courtesy running for our catcher, which I believe that's Madison Brown. A.J. steps in. That's going to be a ball. There's a drive out to Lawyer at second. Flips to first for the final out of the inning. That takes us into the sixth where the Lanesville Lady Eagles do lead four to nothing. We're going to step aside and be back in just a moment. In 2015, we launched the Dolly Parton Imagination Library. This is phase two of the Happily Ever After project. With the assistance of several local donors and sponsors, along with five years of fundraising by the Washington County Youth Foundation, we finally had enough resources to launch the service. The Dolly Parton Imagination Library is a free service that mails age-appropriate books to all required Washington County children under the age of five. Although the faces of the leadership of the Washington County Community Foundation have changed over time, as is always the case with any healthy, thriving organization, the core values and mission remain the same. We continue to work diligently to assist our donors in creating a legacy that is meaningful to them. All of our success is directly related to the generosity of the sons and daughters of Washington County. We will continue to help our donors give back to our community through our foundation and improve the quality of life in our county. Back to action here where the lady senators do trail four to nothing. Up steps lawyer. That one goes straight back over the press the box. Batter. The batter's number two. Batter's number 21, Haley Goldman. On deck is, is the right fielder, Ellie Brooks. Lawyer squares to bunt. Misses that one, so strike. Number two. Abel settles on the rubber. Goes inside with that one. fires that one up high <clears throat> for the first out of the inning and her 10th strikeout. Haley Goins steps it in. Ooh. 
That one goes inside. Goins does a nice job of getting out of the way of that one. Squares to bunt, lays that one down. Gracie fields it, fires to first. For out number two. Going steps on first about the same time that Hayden Kress is there. Number eight, Ella Brooks. Empire having a conversation with Lanesville's head coach. Brooks steps in. That one fouled back for a nice strike there. Way out ahead on that one. Nice change up by Gracie Abels. That's the, the third time she's gone to that change. Two of them look beautiful. One of them went to the backstop. <laughs> that one with some spin. Gracie able to field it. Goes one, two, three, four. The Lanesville Lady Eagles in the top of the sixth. We're going to step aside. We'll be back in just a moment. Hi, I'm Matt Wolford, president of the IHSAA Foundation, and we need your help. We need your help so the youth of our community can develop advanced leadership skills. We need your help giving high school administrators and coaches the instruction and insight they need to be better role models and teachers. To learn more or to make a tax-deductible contribution, go to IHSAAFoundation.org. You'll not only be contributing to the foundation of the IHSAA, you'll be contributing to the foundation of our community. You're good at making big announcements. We're having a go! <laughs> We're good at your insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, online, over the phone, or in person, and stop knocking on wood. Back to live action here at the West Washington Softball Complex, where the Lady Senators do trail four to nothing. Uh, Abels has pitched a beautiful game so far, S ten strikeouts. Um, I would say that she's probably outdone Nunnamaker a little bit, um, you know, from the pitching from the circle. But the defense behind her hasn't helped her out. <clears throat> so, top of the lineup here for the Lady Senators: Destiny Nafis, the left fielder. Pops that one straight up in the air. Nunnamaker drops it. So going to be an air on Nunnamaker. Nafis, one of those kids that just seems to find a way to get on base. In comes Riley Hall. Going to be a strike for her. Fire down to first. Ball out. Nafis going to advance to second. The speedster moves from first to second. Nice job there, moving and advancing. Right. 
We are joined in the press box by AD Mr. Darren Russell. <clears throat> he's he's stepped up, so he uh, he didn't realize that he was going to be on. But uh, no. Darren, tell me a little bit about the spring season and what what COVID's done to it, and allowing you know the the sports and the teams you know what what's able to go on now that hasn't been able to go on in the past. Well, we're not we're not limiting people or attendance. Uh, you know, as you can see here, great crowd at, at the softball game with people sitting definitely spaced out around the outfield fences around the infield they're spaced out in their lawn chairs so you know just the opportunity for people to be here and to see their see their teams play i mean it, it's a great especially on a day like this i mean just a beautiful day and uh you know we got baseball going on we got a, we had a varsity baseball game with salem and then they got a junior high game with christian academy uh, they had elementary volleyball in in the front gym today and you know just people being able to be spaced out and most people are doing a very good job of still wearing their mask and you know respecting that and you know I, even though the governor has lifted the mask mandate for the state I mean still at schools you're still expected to wear them and so you know we've not <clears throat> Oh, going to be an air out there in left field. Going to get on first is Lizzie Keltner. So with with everything kind of opening back up a little bit, last year about this time, you uh, you were taking over as AD. You were, you were, you know, getting ready to do the spring sports, and then everything was was shut down. So this is your first time through the spring sports. You it's know, crazy. It's, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. That, that's been the, the statement from everybody I've talked to about sports this year. Yeah. I mean, you know, we – during the fall, you, you know, you, you were constantly worrying about is this game going to get canceled? Um, you know, Friday nights with football, you worried right up until the ball was in the air and kicked off uh, – you know, basketball, we had had issues, not necessarily with our teams, but other teams that was, you know, the restrictions that they had from no fans to parents only to, you know, not playing JV games and playing varsity only. So, you know, just getting people back to a sense of normalcy is, is very important. You know, and like you said, you know, looking out there, there's all kinds of people out here tonight. There's cars everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, people even parked up on top of the hill. Yeah. Um, you know, and everybody's spread out doing what they can so that these these girls that we're watching tonight, but also the boys over on the far field, are able to have that season that they missed out on last year. Yeah, I mean, you know, that was a shame that those seniors last year, and, and you know, you, you hate it for all the kids, but especially the seniors because it's not like the NCAA where they are going to give them an extra year. Those kids lost an entire season. And for many of them, you know, that spring sports was all they played. Yeah. So to lose that was a bad, bad situation. Coming in, you know, these two teams used to be two teams that were regional opponents here with, with Lanesville and, and West Washington. This year it's a sectional opponent because sectional will be hosted at Lanesville. So what kind of mindset does that have, you know, when your team changes from one sectional to another at, from the AD standpoint? How do you how do you go about getting games with those teams in the new sectional? Well, fortunately, you know, Lanesville's been on the sectional for the, in the past. So, you know, that was no big deal. It's not like adding – you know, someone like Edinburgh that we do in <laughs> basketball that you've got to, you know, schedule an hour and a half trip, uh, you know, and th that's what we talked about then or at the end of the year. If, if the sectional st stood the same, then we would continue to contract. But if not, you know, we'd look for somebody else. But in this situation, you know, at least the schools are close and, you know, it's a, it's a good opportunity to see where you stand at right now. And, you know, it, we're still – over a month away from the sectionals. So, so these two teams could change a lot between now and then. Uh, you know, you hate to say it, but I mean, COVID could definitely yeah. play an issue. There's going to be a foul ball. <laughs> Schneider, Schneider does a nice job of chasing that one to the line, but isn't able to bring it back. So Keltner comes back to the plate. 
Darren, you know, we've got beautiful facilities here. We talked about them. Some new additions to the softball field. You, you brought in a, instead of a four foot fence, you made the fence a six foot fence. The girls got two away games against mm -hmm. two, yeah. two quality yeah. opponents because it wasn't quite finished yet. Um, you know, but what additions have been done here to the facilities to help, you know, the, some of the spring sports? Well, I mean, you know, I think you, you start with the Philip Bowsman Athletic Complex that was completed in July and opened up, giving these kids, you know, a huge building with batting cages for baseball and softball that could go in d during their times where they could, could hit indoors, uh, you know, wrestling area, uh, you know, archery is able to go in there. There's a net for them to shoot in, shoot their arrows into. There's a base hit by Lizzie Keltner, going to score at least two. Two-run score for the nice Lady hit. Senators. Nice hit there by Lizzie Keltner, former basketball player for A.D. Russell here. <laughs> I wish she would play this year. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure you and Coach Myers would have Definitely. would have loved to have her play. Definitely. But, you know, the new building offers so much. You know, I think a lot of people thought when it was first built, that it was just going to be for an indoor practice facility for football. And that, that was not the case. I mean, you know, baseball, softball, wrestling, golf, archery are all able to use it. So, you know, that we've showed that building off so many times to schools all around us, much larger schools that, you know, just wish they had something like that. So, you know, that's a huge advantage for our kids. Uh, you talked about the fence. We, we did get that put in because we're hoping to have regional here. And, you know, I'm, I'm want, glad you said that. Yeah, I hope it's regional. Hoping to have we'll a regional. Be here. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, this is probably a team that we're going to have to get by in sectional to get that. So, you know, it, it was completed on Monday, and we had a junior high game here last, last night. Last night. And then varsity game here tonight. It'll, it'll look different before before we get to regional. It'll look different in a few days. Talk, yeah. Talking a little bit about the facilities, uh, some major changes that have happened with West Washington Athletics. Um, the new football coach, not really new anymore. It's been it's been you know out there for a little while. You know, Coach Lowry comes in. He comes from a bigger school. What's he said about the the, uh, he loves the athletic building out there? <laughs> he absolutely loves it. And, you know, there, there's going to be more changes coming for athletics. So, you know, we're not going to put all that out there yet, but there, there's going to be some more changes made and, you know, definitely benefit our kids. And we, we want our kids, they've been successful in so many sports. We want them to have the best the opportunity to continue to be successful into the future. You know, that's, that's one thing that, that West Washington, <clears throat> no matter where you go, they always – I've been to many places broadcasting games, broadcasting things, and, and one thing that everybody always says, no matter where we go, how nice the facilities are yeah. at West Washington. Everybody yeah. likes to come to West Washington because of the hospitality and, and so many of the beautiful facilities and, and the way we do things. Yeah, you're right. I mean, that was started years ago. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's just my job to maintain it and continue <laughs> it. And, you know, I'm going to do my best, and but I, I – you know, I'm sure I'm biased, but but I, I agree. We have some of the best facilities in the world or in the state. Well, you know, I like I've said many times on other broadcasts, I came from Newcastle, which has the, the – it's back mm -hmm. to the world's largest and finest field house. Yeah, until they keep um, switching seats around. <clears throat> well, we can bring in portable seats mm -hmm. there. So but still, you know, great facility there. But when you, I look at West Washington, it's the whole package. They've got everything. Right. You know. and, and it's not just the facilities, it's the community that makes it great. It, I mean, you know, everybody is supportive of all the teams. There's no just this sport or that sport. I mean, you know, it's it's West Washington. It's all of them. You know, and, and I like to call that the trickle-down effect. It starts, you know, you have the, the facilities and then you have – the coaches, the players, the athletic director, the, the administration, the teachers, it's just a whole a whole community, even the parents and, and you know, everybody. We've got grandparents out here, you know, watching. Um, you know, it's everybody. Uh, I, you're, you're exactly right. And the other thing our coaches do a really good job of is starting yeah, at a young sure age not, and letting awesome. them see the importance of, you know, how, how important athletics are and, you know, they – 
you know, I know Coach Lowry, Coach Myers, Coach Sullivan, uh, Coach Long, Coach Ingram, especially uh, Coach Hadley with the volleyball. I mean, she's she had I think seventy some kids at elementary camp a couple <laughs> weeks ago. So, you know, I feel for her. I mean, yeah, <laughs> trying to corral all them, but you know, you get those kids involved at a young age and let them see, be around the high school kids and just develop and, and want to be a part of the program and there's no doubt we've got something very special here so i'm gonna i'm gonna ask the question <laughs> how many how many steps did you get in today because i walked out here to the to the building uh to the press box four times and every time i saw you walking somewhere out here whether yeah. it was to uh you know baseball or softball how many steps did you get in today? as of right now it's a little under twenty thousand. <laughs> So those of you who wonder why uh, when you when you call the school and you ask for Darren on the phone and you can't get him, it's because he's out <laughs> running out, somewhere. That, that, and, I, and I do. I look forward to the spring and fall, being outside, being able to do this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, winter, you're, you're inside all the time. And, you know, there, trust me, there were many nights in the winter I had more steps than that. <laughs> I mean, especially sectional. Yeah, yeah. So thank you very much for your time, thank Darren. You, you know, I really appreciate you a great job. I, I really appreciate, appreciate you coming and, and filling in some, some time with me and, and talking a little bit. But thanks for everything you do. Thank you. Lady Senators back out to a they trail four to two uh, to the Lady Eagles here. They have been able to put together some runs going on. We've got uh, Hayden Cress up to bat. Able to drive that one to third. Nice play there by Goins to get the final out of the inning. So that's going to end that half of the inning. We're going to step aside, have a commercial break. We'll be back in just a moment. At the heart of the Channel brand are the relationships we build with farmers like you. We call it seedsmanship. With Channel, you'll experience our seedsmanship at work services on your farm through the year-round, hands-on, customized service of your Channel seedsman. Your local Channel seedsman, Brady Bishop, knows your fields and can recommend an elite seed product designed to perform in your area and maximize the profitability of every acre. Contact Brady, your local channel seedsman, at 812-620-4624. Back to live action here at the West Washington Softball Complex, where the Lady Senators do trail 4-2 to, to the Lanesville Lady Eagles. Gracie Abel still on the mound here, having 10 strikeouts through those six innings. Looking to go for the complete game here and then get back in the batter's box and drive in some runs. So up comes number seven, Lindsay Casabella. Fouls that one straight back over the top of us. So strike one. Abel settles in again. That one high. Squares the bunt, drops that one, but unable to get it in fair territory. So one ball, two strikes. Casabella going to have to swing the bat here. No more bunts. Tries to frame that one is Lexus Brown behind the plate, but that one a little too far outside. Brings the count two and two. He 
these lady senators are back in action, I believe, Thursday. And then, is it Friday? Oh, okay. So, the game Thursday is canceled. They play Friday. Going to be strikeout number 11 for Gracie. Lady Senators play here Friday and then travel to county rival Salem on Saturday to play. Number one, Morgan Sauner steps in. Tries to grace the Ables, tries to go back to that changeup. It's looked good twice and not so good twice. So she's at 50% now throwing that change. One right back up the middle, kicks off the base and goes out to Madison Brown out in center field. So going to have a runner on first with one down here. That's Allie Schneider stepping in to bat. No, Casabella let off. Mm-hmm. Casabella led off and then Sauner. Uh, and then Allie Schneider is up now. <laughs> so now we're going to get a runner in for Sauner. One down here. That one gets in real deep on Schneider's hand, and then she fouls it back. That pitch in the dirt. Lexus Brown does a nice job of blocking it so it doesn't get any further. That one outside, she chases though, so strike two. Two balls, one strike, one runner on. Abels looks at her wristband for the pitch that Coach Abels calls from the dugout. That one way outside, gonna get away from Alexis Brown, so gonna advance the runner to second. That one outside again. I believe that's a full count now. Abel settles in again. Delivers a nice pitch. That one going to be fouled back into the parking lot. Seems like this game we've had a ton of foul balls. Strikeout number 12 for Abel's. 
Two down here. Hannah Nunnemaker comes back up again with a spot to put her at first. Abels has been super careful with Nunnemaker all day. Ball one. Abels doesn't want to get a pitch in to Nunnemaker because that's where her power is, so she's staying away from her. Two balls, one strike here, two outs. That one out too wide again, makes it three and one. Swings at that one. I don't know that she could have got that one with a telephone pole. It was way outside. Full count here to Nunnemaker. Still going outside. Going to be a ball. Move her to first base on the, I believe that's her third walk of the night. believe it's 17. They don't have numbers on the front of their jersey, so it's a little hard to tell. Runners on first and second, two down. Abel needs to settle down just a touch here, throw some strikes. Coming in, Hare was not one of the girls with that had a lot of power. That one driven out to Destiny Nephis in left field where the out is recorded. So we're going to go to the bottom of the seventh where the Lady Senators do trail four to two. We'll be back in just a moment. Hi, I'm Matt Wolford, president of the IHSAA Foundation, and we need your help. We need your help so the youth of our community can develop advanced leadership skills. We need your help giving high school administrators and coaches the instruction and insight they need to be better role models and teachers. To learn more or to make a tax-deductible contribution, go to IHSAAFoundation.org. You'll not only be contributing to the foundation of the IHSAA, you'll be contributing to the foundation of our community. You're good at making big announcements. We're having a go! <laughs> We're good at your insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, online, over the phone, or in person, and stop knocking on wood. So here's what it comes down to at the West Washington Softball Complex. The Lady Senators have to score two runs here in the bottom of the seventh to push this to extra innings, or the Lanesville Lady Eagles are going to come out of here with a victory. Lady Senators are towards the bottom of their lineup with Lexus Brown, A.J. Combs, and then back to the top with Destiny Nafis. So need, need some of these girls to get hits and, and turn this lineup over. Comes with a strike. That one comes off of 
Lexus's leg way out in front of it, drives it straight down into her own leg, so. That one goes off the end of the bat, rolls past the pitcher to the shortstop who is able to throw Lexus out at first for the first out. In comes A.J. Combs, the senior, looking to propel the Lady Senators to a victory here. Going to have to get a hit here to extend this game a little bit. It's off the end of the bat again across the diamond. Going to be thrown out at first for the second out. So now we're at the top. Destiny Nephis down to the final out left. Nafis able to hold up on the swing there. Nafis able to reach on an air the last time I believe she hit one to the shortstop that was bobbled. Oh, sorry, it was on the on the pitcher hit. So reached tonight on two airs, looking to get on any way she can now. Half swing at that one, gonna be strike one on her. Two balls, one strike, two outs. That one poked over the second baseman's head where she rounds first and puts on the brakes. So Destiny on for her third time tonight. Up comes the freshman, Riley Hall. Riley's been on base tonight, but it was due to an error. I'd like to have the Lady Eagles kick it around a little bit right now. Drives that one straight down in the ground. Pitcher fields it and then throws her out at first for the final out of the game. Going to be three outs. So Lady Senators do drop this one four to two. With that, we're going to step aside. Thank you very much for tuning in and listening, and we will see you guys next time.